Hello, everyone, and thanks for tuning in to Fran Coach's Franchising 101 podcast. I am Tim Parmeter, founder and CEO of Fran Coach and your podcast host. Today is another installment of really and truly my just my favorite uh, portion of the podcast that we do. It's a little little fun segment called In Their Words. In this segment, we are going to hear directly from Fran Coach clients who have become franchise owners. We're going to talk about their background, what led them to consider franchise ownership, how they navigated the process with Fran Coach, what franchise they ultimately chose, and when we can figure out how it has gone so far. So we got a lot to talk about today. And even uh, kind of a, a more special treat, this is our guest is somebody that originally connected with us after listening to this really cool podcast called Franchising 101. So uh, but before we tell you that story, let's a quick remind of everyone who we are. Fran Coach is a national search firm dedicated to working with individuals interested in owning a franchise. We are partnered with well over 600 of the top franchisors in the country, and that spans nearly 70 industries. Our goal is to help clients find the absolute best franchise for them to own. And the goal of the Franchising 101 podcast is to help educate people on all aspects of franchise ownership. All right, that's us. Now let's get to the good stuff. And joining us today from lovely Louisiana. Has anybody ever said lovely in Louisiana all the same time? Uh, maybe, maybe not. Um, Mr. Chandler King. Chandler, how are you, my friend? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? I am. Uh, I'm, I'm, do I'm doing great. I just realized I'm a, I, I, I love me some college football. And I don't know if you and I have ever talked about this being in, in Louisiana. Are, are we an LSU fan, Chandler? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. For sure. Yeah. Last, last weekend was a little tough. So, <laughs> so my, my wife would want me to point out that she is a very diehard Florida State Seminole. So I have to kind of, you know, go along those lines too. So my bad. <laughs> but when it comes to choosing for you or choosing for her, you know which side I'm picking there, brother. So. Oh, I got you. Yeah, no, it was a tough loss last weekend. That's for sure. <laughs> but um, you guys lost to them at the start last year and it turned out OK. So maybe uh, maybe they'll turn it around. So, yeah, we will see. So as, so as much as I would love to sit here and talk about college football all day long, they don't let me have a podcast about college <laughs> football, um, unfortunately. But let's talk a little bit about franchise ownership and this journey. And I've got a bunch of questions I want to ask you, but. I always like to just start, I think, at the at the core of what we do. This is this is a people business. And so tell us a little bit about Chandler. Give me a little scoop on your background kind of before you and I connected and we started looking at franchising. Gotcha. Yeah. So um, I worked for a company called Air Hygiene. Uh, what we did was mission testing. So we go travel all across the country, uh, mainly natural gas power plants, a couple other things. Um, thrown in there as well, um, testing the the air coming out of their exhaust stacks just to confirm that we're you know they are in EPA guidelines and their state regulations and things like that. And you try and and you you kind of casually mentioned travel like your travel is ridiculous, right? Like you're going from you're in you're in basically Shreveport, Louisiana. And every time I would, I, maybe once or twice, I would talk to you and you were actually home, but you were like Texas one day, Pennsylvania the next, you were, you're, you're all over the place yeah. when it's oh, travel, yeah. right? How often are you, how often have you been gone for your job? Um, I think it comes out to a, about 180 to 200 days a year, just depending on how the schedule is. Um, and that ranges mainly continental United States. Uh, but we've had a couple of jobs in Hawaii that <laughs> I wasn't lucky enough to, to be a part of. Um, and then Mexico, Canada, things like that. And there, there's a couple of jobs here and there, uh, odds and ends, Brazil, Peru, um, or Brazil and Chile, I think. And then uh, Abu Dhabi, stuff like that. Oh, my gosh. So, everywhere. <laughs> yet, yet, the, yeah. yet I distinctly remember a couple of times talking to you and you were in West Texas. So... Hawaii, yes. West Texas, oh, yeah. there, yeah. So you uh, you got the short end of yeah. that stick. So. Everywhere. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, um, for sure. That or how did you get started? Because this is I'm always fascinated with the people we talk to. Like, you know, like, 
I'm spoiled. I get to talk to smart, successful people all day long. And the range of things that they do is crazy. How did you get started doing what you're doing? Well, uh, so a lot of the travel is a lot, you know, obviously a lot of driving, uh, also a lot of flying. So we're constantly looking for podcasts or new playlists, audio books, anything to kind of be able to download and listen to. Um, and one of those, I got to kind of looking into the business side of things and stumbled upon yeah, your podcast and kind of listened to it and, and instantly just was interested and wanted to, wanted to just get more information of what, you know, we could do in this area. Gotcha. But like, why, why franchise ownership, why business ownership? What was the thing that maybe, or, or some of the things that were really kind of pushing you even to explore this? I was really interested in the franchise just because it's not completely starting from the ground up. Um, you're not coming up with this extravagant idea and business plan and um, how everything exactly works 100% on your own. Uh, there's a, a, you know, a dedicated plan and strategy to, to this whole opening and running the business side of itself too. So that's what really kind of drew me to wanting, you know, looking at a franchise instead of just opening, uh, starting a business on my own yeah, and going from there. Gotcha. Um, and so if I, if I were to look back and I, don't quote me on this exactly, but it's September, 2023, when we're doing this, you and I first talked spring of 2022, right? Maybe almost a year and a half ago when we, when we first connected and I think as, as we always tell people, timing is everything with this. So we, we kind of got chatted what wasn't quite right, the right time uh, for that. But um, I think one of, the, one of the many reasons why I am confident you're going to be successful as a franchise owner is like you are incredibly like diligent, driven to make things happen. Um, we, weren't, we weren't ready then and you just kept plugging away. And next thing I know, I'm like, Who's this Chandler dude bugging me again? Right back, back out of back out of nowhere. Um, so, so this this wasn't one of those things where you just kind of like, hey, I'm bored on a long drive. Who, you know, what can I listen to? This was something that like this has been on your mind for a while and really kept focusing on. So, um, which I think is su super cool and really again kudos to you for the, the persistence and the, and the again kind of like figuring stuff out. Right, so. We get we get reconnected earlier this year, and we start to look at franchises. And I'd have to take a peek here. I think we started with maybe four things right off the bat. Um, if you if you can kind of remember back, like uh, all right, dude, here's here's the four. Bam, 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 bam. Um, what was going through your mind at that time? Talking about these four things you know nothing about, and jumping into those all of those conversations. What was that like? What were some of the things going through your mind? Hey everyone, I am proud to spotlight one of our premier franchise partners this month, and that is Senior Helpers. With Senior Helpers, as a franchise owner, you can truly have it all. You'll be able to discover your purpose and make your calling a career as a Senior Helpers franchise owner. Founded way back in 2002, Senior Helpers has expanded to become a global brand with more than 350 franchise locations. As America's most trusted senior care brand, Senior Helpers makes it easy to stand out in your local market. As a franchise owner of Senior Helpers, you'll be able to enjoy the independence of owning your own business, grow your income in the lucrative senior care industry, benefit from a proven recession-resistant business model, receive unmatched one-on-one -on -one business coaching and training support, and build fulfilling relationships that allow you to make a positive impact in your community. Get in touch with us today to learn more about becoming a Senior Helpers franchise owner so you can create your better tomorrow. So the main thing I looked at uh, when you sent those four were, uh, for one, I kind of asked myself if this was something I would personally use. Um, you know, whether it's, you know, kind of the uh, house cleaning or the, the home cleaning and then the, the uh, lawn care or um, lifetime, anything like that. I, I kind of looked at it as me being the consumer and picked the, you know, wanted to pick one that I personally would use. 
Um, and the second thing is something that I would find very interesting to do day in and day out, something that I can, you know, kind of dig my feet into and, and really uh, grow in our area with you know, great, great competition in the area, you know, our, compared to what we are now. Um, the franchise ended up decided on a competition wise is great in the area. So um, that's kind of what I'm, I was thinking there. Gotcha. And as we got into the, the process, was there, I guess maybe anything that surprised you about the search, maybe even anything you kind of learned about yourself as we were going through, going through this journey? Yeah. Um, really wanted to really kind of figured out um, that, man, it's, <laughs> Uh, it gets it got a little tough sometimes, you know, it's a lot of, a lot of stuff, um, keep up with. Um, and I, I've learned about myself realizing how well of multi or uh, multitasking <laughs> you could do, um, kind of looking through and sorting through the franchises. So. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a lot of information coming at you fast, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. In, in the middle of, of your job. And I, this goes back to, we just did a podcast. Oh, maybe a couple of weeks ago, and we we'll always use the phrase FSO, right? Which is, as we call it, figure stuff out. Though I usually use a different S word, right, for that. And so I go back to kind of our whole journey together from a year and a half ago to today. You're a figure it out type of guy, right? And I think as we, whether it's, you know, how you know, going through this whole process, you're managing the travel and everything crazy with your job, but um, and I hope you're okay with me sharing this because in the course of like the last month of this process, and sometimes people are like, oh, I'm really busy. I don't have time for it. And I'm like, that's crap. You're going to make time for what you want to make time for. So you got a full-time job driving you, literally driving you all over the, all over the country to very sexy locations like, you know, Odessa, right? And so <laughs> just the amazing places, right? But you're also about to get married, right? And so you went, if I get this straight, you got married, then went on your honeymoon, and then went on the went to meet the team day, all in about a three or four week span in the middle of everything that you were doing from work. Is that I'm pretty close on that oh, timeline, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. I think it was two weeks exactly from the from the wedding that we were uh <laughs> flying up for the discovery day. So. <laughs> Good. Yeah. So um, there's, yeah. So there's, there's wedding honeymoon and then meets team day kind of, kind of in, kind of in that, that order chronologically. And, and then just in case your wife tunes into this wedding was the most important, right. Then, then honeymoon, then oh, meet yeah, the team for day. Sure. So, um, and then yeah. and it was super cool too, because then she, she jumped right in with you. I know she was, you know, along the ride uh, throughout all the conversations, but she was able to go to meet the team day for you as well. Um, and yours was in, was in person. Um, talk about what that experience was like, because you went, what, you had a kind of a dinner the night before and then a full day the next, you know, kind of the next day. Walk, walk everybody through what that experience was like for you guys. Yeah, so we, um, we got in, uh, I believe, on a Monday, kind of Monday afternoon. And like I said, they, they bring us to dinner with some other um, kind of franchisee prospects, I guess some other people looking into uh, buying into the franchise and kind of get to know everybody and talk to everybody from different places where they're from. Uh, I think there were, I can't remember exactly where some of those people were, but, um, and kind of also meet um, the, you know, directors and uh, COOs and, and stuff like that, kind of in a less formal setting you know not in an office or kind of at a at a dinner table um and then yeah the next day we jumped right in and they they broke everything down for us and, and did a good um explanation of, of how the product works and kind of making sure you know you you know what you're you're getting yourself into <laughs> prior to prior to getting yourself into it really right yeah and that was probably a little bit of information overload that day too correct <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Did you, when, and you were, you guys were pretty sure, I mean, short of something awful happening like that day, you guys were pretty darn sure this was the thing for you. But was there, 
was there kind of a moment during the day that you, that you got you and your wife kind of looked at each other and are like, oh yeah, this is this, this is for sure it. <laughs> yeah, they um, we actually kind of broke for lunch and uh, they, they took us to a restaurant there too for lunch and uh, we me and her drove separately to the the restaurant and I think that was when we had the the conversation of yeah this, I think this is going to be it so yeah that was kind of the breaking point. Nice. Um, so the, and I know we looked at, I think four different franchises to start with. We'll get down to one. We'll give us, let's, let's do the, 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 uh, you know, the, the franchise reveal, right? What, um, what, what franchise are you now the owner of? Uh, Lifetime Green Coating in uh, Shreveport, Louisiana. Hey everyone. I wanted to take a quick break from our podcast to tell you about our amazing friends at Entrepreneur. If you're looking to become a franchisee or simply learn more about business ownership, and guys, let's be honest, you're listening to the Franchising 101 podcast, so we know you have some interest in this, then I really encourage you to go to entrepreneur.com to check out all of their great content and resources. Seriously, Entrepreneur has everything, all the way from a bookstore to the best podcast webinars and videos, plus information on upcoming events, and the latest articles that seriously, they cover all aspects of franchising and business ownership. If you're having trouble deciding which franchise is right for you, start with Entrepreneur's renowned Franchise 500 ranking, which highlights the best franchises of 2022. For 45 years and counting now, Entrepreneur has been and continues to be the most widely recognized and respected authority in the franchise market. Digital and print subscriptions are available, so you never miss out on anything. So seriously, what are you waiting for? Go to entrepreneur.com right now and learn more. So uh, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Uh, Elevator pitch, lifetime green coatings. Chandler, what is that? Please tell us more. (laughs) Gotcha. What we do is a commercial and residential floor coating. Um, It's almost like epoxy. Uh, kind of lays on most our main focus is garage floors but we do have a commercial side of it um, as well as driveways patios cabinets for your garage or a shop um, things like that and it's like i said it, it compared to epoxy or any of the polyureas or polyaspartic coatings on the market it tops them all <laughs> not biased whatsoever not 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 at all but i think one of and correct me if i'm wrong on this but your 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 day job that you've had right is we talk about like the air quality and we're making sure things are <laughs> as as good as they can be um to me that was one of the things that really kind of resonated for you with lifetime green coatings because it is the the product itself is safer, better for the environment. I mean, the second word in the name of the franchising is green for a reason, right? So <laughs> how, how much did that factor into to play for you with what that product was and how that, how it, the kind of the impact it had in, on the environment? Yeah. So I think my main focus, like you said, looking into franchises was um, an environmental friendly type of franchise with, with my background and lifetime green coatings is, 100% plant-based and it's 100% made in the U.S. Um, all VOC free, non-toxic. It is a, an actual green product, very sustainable. Um, and especially when you compare it to another product on the market, it's, you know, there's no harmful chemicals or anything. It's, you know, pet and child safe, food and water safe. So it's, it's a very, like I said, very green product, very green friendly. Yeah. And I think for, to me, to me, one of the beauties of lifetime green coatings is really in the name, right? So if you are talking to somebody that is eco-friendly, that wants something that has those kind of green characteristics, well, that, that's a really easy sell. And if they're not that concerned about that, well, the lifetime piece, we got a lifetime warranty, right? So it's ba- yeah. it's based on all of those things, but it, to me, it's, it's kind of like, I mean, again, we probably should all be super conscious of that, but but not everybody is, and that that's okay. But the fact that it's a great product, such to the fact that there is a lifetime warranty on it, um, definitely is definitely <laughs> speaks speaks to the quality, right? So, um, yeah. Talk about your experience 
Um, cause I want to come back to the meets team day for a couple things here. So, um, how important was it to you guys for the, the people, right? And the, within the franchise, their leadership team, all of their support, kind of the, the, the culture and the vibe within their organization. How important was that for you guys? Very, very important. It's probably one of the, probably the second most important thing behind a, a green product. Um, and they impressed both of us, my wife and I, a lot <laughs> for the for the discovery day. Um, just being able to meet with everybody and and just speak to everybody and um, even kind of having little one on one conversations while you're you're in a break or anything was was great. I mean, there everybody's on the same page and bought in, ready to to you know make an impact with the business for sure. Yeah, and and I this isn't always the case for franchises, but Lifetime Green Coatings is is a relatively new brand. Right. But um, very, very picky. And I think very I know they were just blown away by you guys as well. Right. That it really sh it really <laughs> should be. I mean, let's be honest, way more your wife than you. But it was. Um, oh, yeah, for sure. But it, but, <laughs> it, but it really should go that way. And and there there are times where, um, you know, we talk about you are mostly there by the time you got there, which is pretty normal. But you, you don't ever know there. Sometimes the franchise shows up differently. Sometimes people in your position, like, I don't know, go all jackass mode on the day or, you know, if there's, if it's in person, maybe there's a little too much, you know, adult beverages the night before. So, I mean, people can do some dumb, dumb <laughs> yeah. stuff, but to me, that's when, you know, you've really made that, made that connection with this. So, um, the other thing, um, that I want to talk about, cause we, we've got, um, this, this comes up from time to time is, there are times people think experience is really key in franchising, whether it is, you know, I've been working in this industry for the last 30 years. Therefore, I have to have a franchise in that industry. It rarely happens that way, but it's what people think. And then there's a thing I need experience from a, from a number, a number perspective. I need 20 years experience doing this. Um, I have socks older than you. And so I think it is, <laughs> I might have them on at the moment. So um, it's, it's uh, super cool. And I just want people to realize you don't have to be, you know, old and bald or old and gray, like, like, like me, you can be literally in your twenties um, and have franchises that are going to look and see what really matters. Do you have a track record of success? You've been super successful already at a, at a young age in the corporate world. Are you going to follow the plan? Are you driven? Are you dedicated right to, to this? So for you going through this and maybe not with lifetime green coatings for sure, but just in general in the process, did you ever get a sense that people are like, you know, the franchises, let me, let me clarify the franchises are like, Ooh, who are you Chandler? You, you couldn't possibly do this because you don't, you know, have, you know, 20 years experience. Did you ever run across that at all? Not, not at all. Uh, and honestly, I was, I, like you said, I was surprised about it. I, I thought that there would, there's always, you know, going to be a little glass ceiling over you until you can, you know, get a little bit more experience or more age or whatever the case is. And it, talking even to all the other, the franchises, I mean, none of them ran into that. I didn't run into that at all. Um, even, you know, all the meetings and conversations with, with everybody were it, more impressed then you know then judgmental i guess would be the word yeah no and it's i, I think and I, I wanted to bring that up i'm glad you did like i asked that question i was pretty sure that was the answer but i wasn't 100 percent sure so um <laughs> probably would be a bad trial attorney there right don't ask the question you don't know the answer to but uh, it's just yeah. it's really rare when it happens from a from a from the fran franchise awards right um and there are a couple out there that probably probably would. Well, we didn't, we didn't talk to those, but it really is. It's the number one thing a franchise is looking for. Are you going to follow the plan? Um, that, that, that's easy. You've proved, you've proven that throughout this, this process and, and your career thus far. And you're like, is there a track record of success? Can you figure stuff out? Are you like, and I think sometimes with, with people that are maybe in their twenties, a little bit younger, they're, they're sometimes a little chip on their shoulder going like, 
I can freaking do this. Give me an opportunity, right? So, <laughs> um, so kudos, kudos to you for for everything you've done to get yourself even in a position to do, to do this. So, um, really, really cool. What's um, you were sitting? I mean, a year or so ago, kind of on the the other end of this podcast listening to me ramble on incessantly and then some other joker on here as a guest right so now it's now it's you right <laughs> so now you're you're speak you're speaking to everybody else right all seven people that listen to this thing um what would you what would you share with somebody that is maybe listening that's not quite sure should they take that next step is this for them based on kind of your experience and your journey with this yeah uh i would say get get more information right off first off um, you know, reach out. You you did a great job of explaining everything and kind of breaking stuff down from a you know wasn't really in a business or in a franchise. Uh, you did a great job kind of breaking all that down and and getting me more information. I know one of the big things that that kind of made me not want to open a franchise is just having all these questions and kind of doubting and just not, you know, fully understanding what the, the process is and what the, the business is. And once those questions get asked and they, you get an answer, you can confidently make you know, better decisions. And that's, I think that's kind of what it came out to. Um, no, it is. And I always just think if we try to treat this like an educational journey, right? Well, what's the worst that happens is you learn something new and you file it away for later. Right. I mean, and you're a perfect example of that. We were we were there a year and a half ago. Hey, we learned something not quite right for now. We know what we need to do. Then we come back and then and then prove there we are. So, um, no, super cool. What's um, wh where are we in the process? Are we officially open for business, by the way? Not not yet. Uh, so we next week we will go we'll travel to Indianapolis to their corporate office to a, a hero academy and they'll train. Um, my sales, my business development manager, uh, one of my install techs and myself on actually laying the product out um, and then going through the whole sales process and their all the online um, apps and programs that they use, making sure we're all confident with it. And then following week, we're trying to kick it into high gear and get going. That is so cool, man. I'm I'm very excited for you guys on this. And um, that'll be drinking from a fire hose when you're in Indianapolis next week for that training with everybody. So um, <clears throat> very cool. Um, and then, you know, for everybody that's in Shreveport, lifetime cream coatings of Shreveport. Come on, man. Like those don't be messing around. Your your garage floor looks like crap. You know it does. Let's call Chandler. So um, so um, super, super cool, man. I, I am like, really, it's been an absolute pleasure to get to know you and so excited for, 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 for you. I know you're going to be super successful. I also know those guys will show up on your doorstep if you're messing, messing things up, um, which I, I know they're not going to have to, but I, but again, I know you're in great hands with everybody there. So um, always, a always a pleasure, man. And I'm, I, again, I'm really excited for you to, uh, see how successful you can be at uh, as a franchise owner with lifetime cream coating. So Chandler, thank you, my friend, for coming on today to tell your story. Uh, not a problem. Thank you. Awesome. And as always, for all of our loyal podcast listeners, what the heck are you waiting for, man? Uh, Francoach.net, reach out to us. There's never any fee for our service. Let's chat and figure out how we can help you create your better tomorrow.